Have you ever seen a 3D printer that used a rotating build platform instead of a stationary one? They're called Polar 3D Printers, and they're really unique. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Sculpto 2 Pro, which is a great example of this style of kinematic system, and we're going to talk about what makes them so special. This printer is unique for many reasons. Right off the bat, it's a polar system, so you can see it's actually spinning the part as it's printing. It also has a handle built into the top, and all of the motion components are held within this envelope. So unlike a traditional 3D printer that moves the build plate back and forth, this doesn't really change size as it's printing. It's a really unique system, and it's a very interesting printer. This is also the only 3D printer I've ever bought from a store. I actually went to Joanne, trying to buy some foam core for a scanning project, and they were selling this on clearance. They were usually $500, they had it marked down to 200. To me, that's just really interesting because not only was it being sold at a retail store, it's also very different than most other 3D printers. So let's talk about the Polar system. The Polar 3D printing process doesn't use X, Y, and Z coordinates like we're used to. Instead, we have R, theta, and Z. So we'll work backwards, the Z is obviously the height, so that's just describing how thick of a layer we're printing and how far to move the nozzle between each layer. R and theta are a little bit different than X and Y, so instead of calculating an X and a Y in a Cartesian coordinate system, R is the radius, so the distance from the center point of the, the building platform, and theta describes the angle, so that's the angle off the midpoint of that circle. The way the Sculpto 2 interprets these values is the R is based on the arm here. So here we're controlling the radius. That's controlling how far from the center point we are on the circle, where the theta is controlled by the spinning bed itself. So that controls the angle off that midpoint. So we can see the bed kind of moving back and forth. That's changing that angle, and R is changing the radius. The total lack of an interface reminds me a lot of my very first 3D printer, which is this PrinterBot Jr. from 2013. It doesn't have any buttons on it at all. In fact, it doesn't even have an on and off switch. You just plug it in the back, and when you want to turn it off, you unplug it. There's no ability to control this printer, so the X and the Y axis you have to do through software. This wasn't really a big deal at the time, but now, when I'm 3D printing something, I want to have a little bit of control over the machine, in case I need to make adjustments or if I want to do an emergency stop. So let's talk a little bit about who this printer is targeted at. Given the fact that it was sold at a craft shop, I think it's meant for people who don't have a whole lot of experience in 3D printing. And the total lack of a slicer software also indicates that it's really meant for people who want to scroll through Thingiverse and see something and say, I want to make one of these. I'm kind of torn on how I feel about this. On one hand, I think it's great that there's a 3D printer that has this sort of pre-built library of files that other people have printed and tested, and it's kind of a plug-and-play experience, but it's really been my personal experience that plug-and-play printers don't really work. There's always some kind of calibration issue or filament loading issue that cause most users to get fairly frustrated and give up pretty easy. So let's talk about some of the technical specs of this machine. Believe it or not, it actually has an authentic E3D hotend, something that most hobby printers don't really have. It's even got the little holographic foil sticker on the back, just like the Prusa ships with to confirm its authenticity. The build plate is removable and flexible, so you can actually pop it off and then give it a good flex and the part will pop right off, so there's no scraper needed. The raft pretty much peels off the part without a whole lot of extra effort. Loading and unloading the filament on the Sculpto is done entirely through the phone app. So I've got my phone here, and we're going to go through and unload and then load filaments. The first step is to click the Change Filament button, and you'll notice it prompts you to pick a color. It's kind of interesting the way it does it. It picks four colors that you have to manually input. So purple, blue, purple, red. And it's confirmed. And so now we get to pick what type of filament we're going to use. In this case, we're just regular filament. Hit continue, and it will begin heating the nozzle. It's definitely an interesting idea having the printer choose different colors to give you feedback, but the printer doesn't really have a lot of other ways to communicate with you, so I think it's actually a pretty clever solution. Now that the printer has reached 190 degrees, we can click continue, and we're gonna take this filament on these rollers here and give it a little bit of an angled cut just so it feeds in nice and smooth. And you'll notice that the screen is prompting us to eat filament. It's kind of a weird uh, choice of words, but I guess it works. So we're going to click that and put pressure on the nozzle. And now it's pulling the filament through. And now it's pulling it with uh, a little bit more speed. So now we're loading the filament up and you can see it moving through the Bowden tube. Something that's worth noting, I'm using some filament rollers that I 3D printed here for my spool. The Sculpto did come with this acrylic stand, 
but while I was setting it up, it shattered and actually cut my finger. <laughs> so I'm not a huge fan of, of these sort of thin acrylic sheets like this. You can, you can kind of hear it's really brittle material. Um, I think the bearings are gonna be a little bit better call. And so from here, we can check to see, uh, we're being prompted to see if there's filament coming out of the nozzle and we can take a look and it is indeed coming out. So we have filament that is extruding from the nozzle and now we know we're good to go. So here we are at the homepage of the Sculpto app and we can scroll through and see all these different categories and we're actually looking at Thingiverse right now. So these are all Thingiverse models. So if I go into favorites, I can see here are some models that I've selected as favorites and here are some models I've actually printed. So this is a door puller and I already printed one of these just to test it out. And the idea is it's a little bit long of a print so it fits on the build plate, takes up a good bit of volume and it's just a nice test to try out. We can go through and select the model and we can see a visual representation of how much space it'll take up on that build plate. So from here, we can select the, the settings for our model. I selected none for support because this model was designed to print without supports. Uh, strength refers to the density of the part or the amount of infill. So I'm just selecting normal and quality refers to the layer height. So they have fast is 0.35, normal is 0.25, fine is 0.15. 0.25 seems fine for me, so that's what I'm gonna select. And then we can also adjust the print speed. Again, I'm just gonna leave it sort of at standard. I am gonna print it with a raft just so I have some time to make any adjustments if things go wrong. And from here, I can add it to my queue. So from here, we can see the printer's status. We've got my part queued up and ready to go. So I can go ahead and click start next print. And once again, we're gonna go through that color verification process. So in this case, I can see the color on the bottom of the printer is changing. So I'm gonna go ahead and select green, purple, blue, and red. And now it's confirmed. So the part is sent to the printer and the printer will heat up and we'll get printing. So now that we've been printing for a while, let's go ahead and take a look at the app and see how our print is doing. We can take a look at it and visually verify the model is still printing. And we can also see how much time is left and a general amount of elapsed time as well. So here we can see we're about 17% finished. We have less than an hour left. We can also see the information of material usage and things like that on the app as well. What's kind of cool about this app is they've really gamified the printing process. So we have print history, an average of print time, um, longest print, things like that. These are statistics that are probably stored in Prusa Slicer or in Cura or on the printer itself, but they're not really brought forward like this. So we don't have this kind of, we don't get achievements. It, it's kind of a funny thing, I think, for a lot of people who use 3D printers regularly. But I think if I was coming into 3D printing from a craft background, getting these badges like calibrated the printer, 12 hour print, things like that, those are kind of cool and that's kind of fun to see. The Z axis on the printer is relatively tall, but just from going on the featured models and the examples, I imagine most of the parts that are made with this printer are probably just an inch or two in height. So I think that if they had actually made it smaller, so the Z axis didn't come up quite as tall, this would be a great machine for a headless print farm, especially if you had one piece of software that could centrally address all of them. They're small, they're lightweight, they don't generate a lot of heat, and generally speaking, it, it's almost portable. Like this looks like you could put it in a backpack. The complete lack of a hardware interface is kind of a big deal for me. I wish that there was some way to address the printer directly, so maybe buttons or a screen instead of having to go through a phone app. My biggest fear is that when there's an iOS update and the app is no longer being maintained, this printer effectively becomes a paperweight. So we can already see Sculpto hasn't tweeted anything since 2017, which tells me that this printer is probably not in active development anymore. So it's obviously a pretty real concern. If you buy one of these things, you're sort of roped into their software and you don't have an ability to update it as time goes on. I think if Sculpto was a larger company or had a more active presence in the 3D printing space, this wouldn't be as big of a problem, but the fact that they might turn away from developing this at any moment uh, is a little bit of a risk to buy one of these, especially at full price. I went ahead and popped the bottom off just to take a look inside the printer and see what's going on under the hood. There's a wireless dongle, which gives it wireless capabilities, which is how it generates its own Wi-Fi network. And then there's also an SD card and an antenna. Overall, it's a very unique printer. I don't know how useful it's gonna be in production, especially that given the price, you can also buy an Ender 3 or more of a community-oriented machine that has freely available software modifications. But generally speaking, if you like odd machines or you like collecting 3D printers, it's definitely one to look out for. The polar system that this machine uses, it's just not very common. You rarely see commercial 3D printers that use these polar coordinates. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.